Hey, welcome back, everyone. Uh, my name is Tanache Chaponda. I'm the co-host of uh, The Done Deal Show and also the CEO and founder of Sasani Studios, which we are a creative ad agency that focuses on bringing brands to culture with influencers and celebrities. Hi, everyone. I'm Tonji Bakeng, co-host of the show, but also CEO of OnScale, a CRM and collaboration tool for talent managers who run campaigns with brands. Awesome. So today's guest, really excited. We have Brooke Berry here from Snap. I won't say too much. You know, Brooke, let us kind of, you know, let the audience kind of get to know you a little bit. Yeah. So my name is Brooke Berry, as they said. And so I'm the head of talent development here at Snap. I sit on the talent partnerships team. And, you know, my job is basically helping talent that can include creators, celebrities, reality stars, you know, grow their audience and build their businesses on Snap. So in addition to managing relationships with creators and talent, I'm focused on educating, providing best practices, creative strategy for creators across Snap and fostering Snap's in-person presence with creators. So excited to be talking to you. You know, Brooke, like this show is about talent management and you've been a talent manager, you've been to CAA and I would love you to take like a minute or two to tell us more about your journey because you've been in big companies. Yeah, definitely. So it's funny, in college, I was a film major and people asked me what I want to do. And I always used to say what I wanted to didn't exist yet. You know, um, social media was not really a thing. YouTube was just coming out. I didn't get Instagram until after college. So I was kind of at the forefront of all of it. Um, as you mentioned, I started my career at CAA. So while I have worked in some creative environments, I've been very, very heavily planted in the corporate world. And that was definitely deliberate on my move. So I worked at CAA, worked in the mailroom, was an assistant to a talent agent who worked in scripted TV. So I worked with a lot of producers, writers, directors, going from, you know, a show being a concept to being completely on air, like Orange is the New Black, How to Get Away with Murder. It's wild. So yeah, I started at CAA and then I got into digital probably 2014. So been heavily in the talent representation world for a long time. Especially, you know, what I'm excited to dig in for everyone listening, is especially getting them to see your background and how insightful this is going to be. And in the creative space, let's talk about Snap. It's like one of those things we feel like I'll, either you know the value of it, like super hooked, what I've noticed, or there's a majority of other people in the creative economy have no idea kind of the value. So I'm wondering if you could kind of talk about Snap and the offers you have for creators. Yeah, I mean, it's it's wild. I never wanted to join a platform. You know, I've worked at um, media companies like Awesomeness TV, and I've always been planted with creators in a more consulting type of way, and that consulted across platforms. But once I started the conversations at Snap and started, you know, having the conversations come over here, I completely fell in love. I considered myself a social media expert, yet I had no idea all the awesome things that that Snap was up to. So the why behind the what is totally what hooked me. I've been here a little over two and a half years, and I just think, you know, Snap has been very strategic ar around kind of what they are to creators, how to bring about offerings, and it's just really exciting. So, yeah, I think Snapchat is very different from other platforms. I always say Snap is an and, not an or. Um, and I think, you know, my advice to managers is to really stay curious about Snap. As you mentioned, there are so many different offerings across Snap, a lot of, you know, which didn't exist even two years ago, right? So staying kind of in those conversations and staying ahead of the curve is definitely the way to go, 100%. Yeah. One thing that is fascinating your background and your journey is that you work closely with creators as a um, like manager. So you had their best interests, you know, and it was also your business to help them grow their income and work on the best deals. And can you tell us how this experience helped you in your day-to-day -day job at uh, Snapchat where you also empower creators yeah, I think it's important to stay empathetic for creators. I think there's this misconception that creators know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what their brand is and they're figuring it out as they go. And I, that's something I recognize way early in my career. So kind of being that third party in the room as they just bounce around ideas, trying to figure out to take what they want to do and turn it into a business is a completely different ball game. And so I've been able to really bring that over to Snap, you know, 
you talk about the ways that our talent partnership team is very different. We're really in the weeds with creators, texting creators, you know, if they have questions, really helping them, you know, find success and really just be that that kind of champion for them as they navigate their journey. So um, I try to be very empathetic and understand that every creator has a very individual journey and I'm super flexible to what they need from me to help them be successful. One thing I try to push uh, my client, my clients all talent managers, we help them run their campaign and it's they always look for a new opportunity. They always look how to understand the platform. And I will say something that you hear a lot. Too many people are sleeping on Slack. <laughs> I've said it a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> and recently, I met this agency, talent management agency called uh, Insight Media. Young talent managers, 20 something. And I don't, I cannot share like how much they make, but Snap is a big portion of the cake, right? Yeah. And they're growing fast. They generate like multiple million dollars per year. And Snap is a big portion of it. And when I talk about it to other talent managers, like, what can we do? And so what's going on? Like, tell us a bit more about like how people can actually leverage Snap. Yes, to reach their audience is one and create amazing content is two, but also as a way to build a business and sustain themselves. I think that's the thing. I think, you know, as as a rep, it's your job to make sure that your your client's getting paid, chase the money, chase the dollars. But we're all in the same business, which is to monetize ideas and help people build their business. And you don't know what idea can come into fruition a year from now. And that's the beautiful place, you know, with where we're at with Snap is we have so many different offerings, whether, you know, a creator is coming on and taking their existing content and syndicating a show. We just announced our stories revenue share program where creators are making a rev share on the the ads that play against their public stories. We have Spotlight, which has an incentive fund, Spotlight challenges. So there's a lot of different ways that creators can make money. A lot more branded collaborations are happening as well. So that's the thing. Stay curious, stay ahead of the curve because you don't know what monetary opportunity can be here a year from now and I think that's the thing with Spotlight with shows with the ads program those are different types of content that creators are able to lean into and monetize for different audiences across Snapchat so it's it's really cool to see the brilliant minds of Snap you know making this happen and helping creators build their business honestly yeah and kind of going off that right you're talking about different types of content you notice like a lot of managers you know some of them let's say have a roster 20 or 30 they're so scattered right like this creator you need to be on you know, YouTube or whatever, this one, you should do snaps. So like, what are the traits as a manager when looking at their roster, who should they be focusing on? Like, okay, they're going to be a better uh, creator for snaps. So what are those traits you've noticed that make snap different from other? Yeah, I th there's a misconception, first and foremost, that there's only a certain type of creator that does well on Snap, mm. which is the vlogger type, the lifestyle type. And yes, there's a lot of lifestyle creators, but there are all different types of creators on Snap. Um, I remember there's this animator, his name is Nutshell. He went from 288 followers to 1.7 million followers on Snap a little over a year. And he has a syndicated show. He posts the spotlight. He's in the revenue share program. So there's opportunities for all different types of creators. But I think when I look at talent um, and, and managers should think about the same, I think one, great storytellers, you know, these are people who can easily identify a moment and, and kind of produce content around that. Um, for example, one creator made her bed in 60 snaps and she made it the most entertaining thing, but it's because how she told the story. Um, and then that goes into number two, which is creators who can easily conceptualize and execute content. You have kind of two buckets of creators. You have creators who film so much content, they don't know where to put it all, which is perfect for Snap because, you know, it is a, a content playground. You can do all types of things on Snap. Um, and then there's creators who do struggle with, what should I produce today? What should I, you know, capture today? Um, and I think that's, you know, if, if you want to ask me, you know, what's something that I think creators come into Snap and kind of, oh, I don't want to say they mess up, but I think overthinking is a big no, no on Snap, you don't have to overthink and it doesn't have to be this performative thing. You really just get to share your regular moments, which goes to my third point, which is authentic creators, I think, who are authentic in their voice and and kind of bringing that um, to Snap. Yeah. I love it. Um, what I hear from you is that your uh, talent team is really supporting creators. Like you said, you in the DM, you help them, you, you guide them. And I guess those creators don't necessarily always have management. And so we need like actual support. 
Let's talk about talent managers. They have a roster. Their roster is already like heavily on Snap. Is there a way for them to engage with your talent team? Because they might have some questions. How do you uh, engage with them? Yeah, I mean, we're talking to managers and agents all the time. We have great relationships with all of the managers, agents at small agents, big agencies, managers. So people usually will reach out to someone on the talent team, whether that's myself or one of my colleagues. Um, we do have an alias and email that people can reach out to, which essentially pings our whole team if they want to nominate creators to put up for snaps or verification, things like that. But we're always having these conversations actively, happy to engage, you know, managers who have a great roster. And I think, again, don't be shy about numbers. Maybe you have a really great talent. You're like, oh, they're more emerging. It's like, bring them all. You know, obviously the criteria for verification is confidential, but we look at all different types of factors when it comes to bringing creators into our Snapstar program, which have then could open up other potential opportunities such as um, Stories Revenue Share program. So I love learning about new creators. So bring, bring them on, please. Yeah. Yeah, that's something too I, I personally notice about Snap, even just talking about diversity, right? Um, meaning where I've seen every type of creator give good feedback. Right? So I'm hearing it from every type of background, age, size, whatever it is, and whoever has a show, they all seem to, you know, really be excited about being part of it. So I'm kind of curious, so is this something internally snaps like, let's push diversity or is it more integrated in the roots? It's, it seems like every type of person seems to like snap who's involved. I would say I've worked at a lot of companies. Snap is the most diverse place I've ever worked at. I remember coming into a meeting once and it was like all black people. But I was as a woman of color early in tech. I'm used to being one, if not a few of, of you know, others. So one, yes, we have a very diverse team. And two, I think we just understand like there's creators of all kinds out there making great content. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I think what is amazing about Snap and how it's built and its product and everything. We have the infrastructure to really support those creators, right? Mm -hmm. Where I think a lot of other platforms might be oversaturated, trying to figure out how to, you know, give raise. But I think we're very cognizant of it. And it's just ingrained in our roots because we're thinking about it across the board, like you said, whether it's diversity in, you know, Black creators, um, LGBTQ plus creators, animators, diversity across the board. We're always looking to diversify the content on Snapchat. To go off that, like, even you, you yourself, I think it was interesting. Yeah. It's like coming for the audience. We were having some graphic design issues. I remember emailing him going, yo, her hair needs to show the full blood. <laughs> I remember like messaging him like, yo, this is part of her identity, right? So <laughs> I just like, you know, how exciting it is, you know, even talking about someone like you, where as a fellow, you know, African-American, I always felt like I have to be pitter-patter and shave and have to walk a certain light. And you are literally doing the exact opposite which i think even for the emerging you know diverse managers is like an inspiration to look at you know what's interesting about that that is something that was so important to me when i tell people i worked at cia they're like how did you get away with it um of course i didn't have skin care at that point i don't think my head was even shaven but i did know early on in my career it is so important to me to be at a place where i can be myself but then i also knew because this is just the world we live in it meant i had to be really really good at what i did I had no room for error. And so I am a shark. I'm on it. I don't miss a beat. No email goes unread. I've just been bred that way. But I think part of it is because I'm overcompensating for the fact that I show up in sweatpants every day. But Snap is the place that has unapologetically let me be myself. And it's incredible because I'm able to function most efficiently when I can be myself. It's inspiring. Thank you for sharing that. And also your entrance at uh, Snap Summit was great. I invite uh, the audience to go on YouTube or to go on your uh, LinkedIn profile to, to see the video where it's quite cool. Um, we'll continue to talk about uh, a Snap, but you mentioned uh, again uh, CAA, and I want to go back to your time in an agency about how to help creators monetize their voice, their talent. I think your expertise could you know, be very interesting for talent managers. Yeah, I think the first thing is managing expectations. I think it is so important. And I know managers and agents are in this position all the time. And it's what makes, you know, our team good at, at our jobs. Managing expectations is everything. I never over promise and under deliver. I usually under promise and over deliver. And then you come out the winner every time. And then from that, it's really, you know, one thing I did early on, and, and this would be my advice kind of leading into your question is, I planted myself at companies where I can get a 360 view of entertainment 
business as a whole. So whether I'm working in the TV department, I understand how it's all happening, how films are getting done, how music's getting done. Same at Austinist TV. While I sat on the talent partnerships team, we're working with the sales team, the marketing team, the distribution team. Having that kind of 360 chessboard view makes you understand your individual players and your clients on the board and where to move them. And I think without that perspective, you're really limited in what you can do. You almost have a ceiling. So as learn as much as you can, even if you think it has nothing to do or pertain to your role. It's home because um, we talk to talent managers who only focus on brand deals. Yeah. Which is only what they know. And so yeah. that's why sometimes they sleep or not because they're like, oh, they don't know how to monetize or what is their cut in this revenue. And I think that I don't want to do that business model, but they can be creative in the way they can find incentives to, you know, push or encourage their creators to create on Snap and monetize on Snap. But in order to do this, we need to think outside of the box and outside of the commission on brand deals. Yeah. And, you know, not to keep gushing internally, but the folks working at Snap are incredibly smart. And you can tell they've come from backgrounds where they have that kind of multifaceted view and they're able to bring that perspective into Snap and do things like build stored revenue share programs. So I agree on both ends. You can you can see it night and day for sure. You know, there's more and more apps that help you create, you know, like private communities and subscription. Uh, I don't need to name them, but there's like a thousand of them. And I was talking with talent managers during like a, a dinner series that we organized in LA. And some of them were like, we don't have any incentive to, you know, like onboard our creators on those apps because we didn't have a commission. So it's just like, it would take us so much time to convince the creator to download the app, to create the profiles. And we take time to push them to create exclusive content and we don't have a commission. So we don't push their creators to do it. And that's why you don't have big creators on those platforms. The second thing I wanted to, to have your opinion internationally, I would love your opinion too. For the past five years, we heard that creators are the new entrepreneurs and they're doing everything by themselves. But being an entrepreneur, I'm a tech entrepreneur, it's hard. You know, like you need to be like driven. And when you're creative, it's hard to be driven and also fight the fight uh, as an entrepreneur. And so I would love to know your opinion on this idea of like creators, entrepreneurs. Are they entrepreneurs or are they artists? Yeah, hundred percent. Well, you know, to your first point, I think, you know, like I said, we work with all managers, agents. We work with talent a lot directly too. And sometimes we defer to the creator. If the creator wants to just talk to us directly and not like that's on them. And I think the managers that we often do a lot of business with are the ones who aren't roadblocking and they understand the direct relationship. And while the money might not be there today, it doesn't mean it won't be there tomorrow. And they're incentivized by things outside of just getting that check in the door today. And I'm telling you, their creators are much better positioned because of that. The second point, yeah, I think entrepreneurial spirits are within some creators, not all. And I don't think it's a blatant statement. And I think our team has an incredible knack because that's the thing. When I think of our talent partnerships team, we're almost like little mini A&R reps, kind of like in music mm. where you're going out to the concert and you're seeing who's the next. I'm out in the field. I'm going to an event tonight where I'm probably going to meet five creators that I didn't know before that makes sense for Snap. So um, it really is about identifying those people who are really multi-layered in what they can offer. And those are my favorite people. Um, someone that comes to mind is like a Mia Finney who creator on Snap, Black creator. She does a lot of uh, fun content with her dad, but she has a syndicated show. She's made good money on Spotlight, um, is in the revenue share program, and she's solo. She doesn't have a manager and or an agent, and that's on purpose. There's no reason for her not to. Anyone would bite at the opportunity to represent her, but she knows what she's doing. You know, she wants to handle it herself, and she likes taking that on. So, you know, every creator's different. I definitely think that majority of them are more creative, and I think they all have ambitions for building and doing it. I think it's more about giving them resources and tools where some need team and some can use, you know, programs like that Snap have to where they don't necessarily need a full operation. But Snap, in a way, is, is acting as an operation tool from them with all the different features that they have, from my perspective. And it's interesting you brought something up about events. Right? Because even if you look at your history, right, you've been in a lot of areas where people are trying to figure out how to even get a response or how to even engage. So what's your thoughts on managers trying to get in the industry? Do they have, is LA a central living ground or can they do it from, you know, anywhere? Kind of talk to me about 
if you were an uh, emerging manager, how to go about getting into the industry? You, I mean, of course, LA just organically puts you in an environment where you could meet someone. But really, my rule of thumb is all it takes is one person to change your life. I love this idea of waking up and before you go to bed, everything can be different based on one conversation, one person you meet. So just identifying one person who can do you one good favor can get you really far. So it's just about identifying a person you think you can have a real life connection with. Because I think in L.A. and I'm, I'm born and raised in L.A. I've been in entertainment my whole life. Conversations become very transactional. You know, people want things that's fine. We're in the business of favor trading. But, you know, building real relationships is so important. And you don't have to build relationships with everybody. You just need one person on your side who can, you know, you can cash in a favor with, you know, in the future. I got this advice from an agent at CIA. I do believe that you only get kind of a chance to cash in one favor per person. So I think you need to be very strategic about what that favor is and when you want to cash it in. But you should be giving favors like nobody's business. Just do what you can to help a person. I can make this intro. I can give you this creator. Just be a yes person as, as long as you can. <laughs> yeah, and going off of that, it's interesting because that's how we even we connected, right? Kevin introed us from the machine, met him at a random event. You know, it was so interesting how we got to the situation now. You're talking about strategic relationships, right? And our agency is always having those debates. Let's say issue goes on. How do we present this to the brand? How do we make sure the influencer looks well in a way that everyone's happy? So what are those mistakes that you feel like people are making when it comes to building strategic relationships? I, the word over eagerness feels like a bad word because I understand it. Um, but I think, again, being cognizant of where that person's at, how much inquiry they could be getting, and just how you can lighten the load for them versus adding on to the load that we all, of mm. course, have. So I think you really just have to be strategic about the approach. Again, are you going to ask for a favor? If you are, maybe don't make that the first thing. Just be really, really strategic. And um, yeah, and understand people. I think that's that's what's helped me in my career. At the end of the day, people make the world go round, and you have to have that finesse with people, with creators, with managers, with agents. You just got to understand how to kind of approach them. We ask you those questions because you may be not aware of it, but you're a role model for a lot of people. And so for them, it's like, okay, she did it, you know, like authentic. So they uh, will listen to what you say and those advice. And it's really important for, for a lot of talent managers, but also people who want to get into the industry. Now, let's go back to Snap because we need to discuss like the details, like what's going on. So... Tell us about like the, the snap discovery shows. Like, what do we need to know about it? What is, you know, like a snap discovery show? And what are the benefits of your know, investing time, energy, and creativity in it? Yeah. So, having a um, syndicated show on Snap is essentially an opportunity for a creator to take their existing content and essentially find a second home on Snap. So, it's a 50 50 non exclusive split. You know, any shows have to be greenlit by our media partnerships team, which they handle all of our publishers across um, sports, the news, um, things like that. And I think, you know, that team really looks at format driven content. I think while every creator makes great content, not every creator makes formatted content that makes sense to be packaged up and repurposed in a syndicated way, if that makes sense. So really, it's people who have, you know, formats, library of content, um, an example of a format, a snap star, Devin Rodriguez, his whole thing is drawing strangers on the subway. That's his whole thing. Um, and so he has plenty of content on that that lives on other platforms and he's able to find a second home of distribution on Snap. But again, the show is called Drawing Strangers. You know exactly what you're getting when you hear that. Um, so yeah, that's essentially what what they look for. And so there's a portal online people can apply to pitch their show. So I like it because it's really like, I have a television background. My, my first tech company was called AfroStream. It was a Netflix of Africa and black content in Europe and, and African continent. So I went to those like meet TV, meet Come, like where you acquire library content. And so what I like going back to talent management, it's, it's an opportunity. You're like, okay, talent managers, go back to the library content of your creators. Try to identify the formats. And you said format, not just content, formats. We, we are speaking the language of, you know, television people, formats, and then try to bring this format on Snap, but it has to fit on the platform. And so... There's a huge opportunity here to reach a new audience, but also like to make money. 100%, 100%. Yeah. And so, yeah, format is something that is, it rings the ears different, but something that could, you know, sustain three to five minutes, 10 episodes minimum to start is the way to think about it. 
Can you kind of explain Snapstars? So Snapstar, a Snapstar on Snap is essentially a verified creator. You know, what is different about our platform than other platforms is we have our stories tab, which is where publisher content lives. That's where a syndicated show would live, for example. And then the second type of content you'll get on that stories tab are snap stars, which are verified accounts. So there's a huge opportunity to be discovered by people who don't subscribe to you if you are verified on Snapchat. Of course, there's also opportunities for people who aren't verified to grow their audience through Spotlight, you know, which is a short form video hub that sits within Snap. But um, being verified on Snap actually gets, you know, distribution outside of just your followers, which is why a lot of creators are really, you know, jazzed on it. Yeah. And we look mm -hmm. at a lot of different factors, as I mentioned, when it comes to verifying Snaps. Or, so they're sitting in a relatively small pool, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think the main is, theme of this, sorry, Tony, I'm getting excited over there, is, you know, <laughs> right. the opportunity that Snap has. You know, I think even us with the talent that we do sign, the more, even the first conversation I had with you, just had our head starting like, okay, there's definitely something... You're seeing it on LinkedIn. You're seeing all these kind of people go about it. So I think it's really a great opportunity for managers to at least, you know, at least try and attempt and start to stay up to date. I would say um, getting your the right creators verified on top is a great entry point to everything else, right? You know, we yeah. sit on the talent partnerships team. We are facilitating partnerships across the company, whether the marketing team is coming to us because they have a new lens that they want to hire a handful of snap stars mm. to promote, or, you know, sometimes we'll work with the sales team because Crocs has a lens that they want to hire, you know, a handful of snap stars. Those short lists of creators are going to be the most leaned in active snap stars. So that kind of, you know, being, whether it's a speaking engagement, perhaps I had a creator join me on this call today, you know, those are going to be the ones who are really, leaned in. So it does definitely opens up a lot more opportunity being verified on Snap. So this is the part of the episode where uh, the audience is listening. We learn a ton of stuff and they're like, okay, okay, okay. So I will make sure my top creators, all my creators on Snap and really active. And then there's this question about like, okay, how do we engage with their followers? How do we grow this following? What's special about Snap or what's different about Snap? And since you know that creators will not go to the FAQ and read the documentation. We need to rely on talent managers to have this information and to coach their creators. So can you share like some advice? Yeah, I mean, you know, what's different and I don't want to compare other platforms, but what I will say is what is different about Snap is it really is a content playground, meaning you're not in a position where, or creators are not in a position where I have to figure out what's going to be my thing on Snap. If one day it's really you living your regular life, doing regular things, especially when I think about your public story. So if one day it's focused on cooking, if the next day we're going to Coachella or the next day we're going to your grandma's 90th birthday or the next day we're just staying at home, you don't have to produce these moments for life. You could just live your life, you know, for those in the Stories Revenue Share program, make money while you're doing it versus relying solely on brand deals to make your money, solely on, you know, these other um, revenue streams. You really get to live your normal life. For example, there's one snap star who went on vacation with her boyfriend and she's in the ads program and the trip essentially paid for itself, right? She's going on the trip to shoot snaps and then it pays for itself. So the other thing that is a big incentive for creators is the ease of creating content on snaps. I think about someone like uh, David Dobrik, who I've been in this space a long time back in the day. David's got his big camera and then he's got maybe three other guys who also have big cameras. And now it's just him and his phone. And now he gets to just enjoy those moments with his friends versus producing these moments with his friends for content. And it's been incredible to see the mental health of these creators just take kind of take a step back while they don't have to overthink their content on Snap versus a lot of other platforms. Not overthink and not overproduce. If we talk about like a business perspective, you have less overhead. So you bring more money home, uh, which is great. I mentioned the, the Snap Summit earlier, and one of the, the takeaways that ten Manager have from this summit, I know like a lot of creators have a ton of value, but like in particular Tenant Manager, is that something that we should, you know, like take away from this? Yeah, um, our stories revenue share program is definitely, you know, the big thing. Everybody's excited. A lot of influx of creators getting on the platform and we're scaling that program. At New Friends, um, we did announce our Snapstar Collab Studio, which is going to be a service available to brands to collaborate with Snapstars across, you know, our ecosystem. So a lot more brand collaborations are going to happen on Snap, which is great. Now more than ever, it's super important to get your talent on Snap, get them verified and get them active just because, you know, Snap is upward of, it's more than 375 million daily 
active users at this point, a lot of whom don't live on these other platforms, right? So um, it's yeah, huge opportunity. And then, yeah, like I said, you just never know what's going to happen a year from now. So staying ahead of the curve is everything, because as you mentioned, alluded to earlier, we find that if not, what happens is you kind of get in this learning curve of having to play a bit of catch up. And then before you know, the next thing hit, you know, it's like, what's Spotlight? It's like, okay, Spotlight's been out. Make sure you're up with that. So, you know, you're just up to date, honestly. Things move fast. Okay, perfect. And, and a way to kind of wrap it up. So we also have a lot of audiences that are brand marketers that listen to our podcast to better understand how they should be engaging with creators for their campaigns. What's a takeaway that brands should be looking at? Because we get a lot of clients sometimes they're like, how do we get into working with Snap? They're so used to the paid side of Snap, but how can they start yeah. looking at engaging with the, kind of you talked a little bit about it. Yeah, our, our Snapstar Collab Studio is going to be the ser turnkey service where brands can, you know, really work across the partners we've done for this to really run their campaigns from beginning to end, from conceptualizing to, you know, hiring the Snapstars to producing. And then what's also starting to happen too is Snapstars are organically bringing Snap up into their conversations with brands. So if, you know, brand X is talking to creator X and they're like, we want to hire you for this campaign, we're going to use this platform this platform they're mentioning oh yeah by the way i have over 500k on snap and they're like great add that into the mix and you know to the point of creators of course being entrepreneurial they'll help kind of produce and come up with you know ideas of what that could look like for them on snap because i think that's the thing too is brands are now in a position of having to learn why creators love snap how they're creating on snap and how that kind of impacts their campaigns moving forward so again stay curious yeah so it's more of like the easy uplift if you're already doing campaigns just ask the creator do you even have a snap that itself L could produce yeah. them more results in the beginning so that, okay awesome yeah. and i can confirm that uh, on scale we have a, a feature that is called rosterling so it's like a media kit that managers send and there's all like the the data and the platform of their creators. And we see more and more snapped on those media kits and with the numbers and it's becoming like a priority platform for some of those creators. So I can definitely see that some managers are, now they see the opportunity. It's pretty exciting. When I worked at VidCon, you know, we, our goal was to sell tickets and obviously I ran social media. So I sent on the marketing side. So we're doing ads across. Snap had high conversion for us. Like they yeah. had high conversion when it came to like getting tickets sold. So conversion on Snap is a, is a thing for sure. Yeah, because I feel like Snap is authentic. Like I know what you said about what's unique about Snap, not comparing to other platforms, but it's so easy to create the content that you don't have to overthink it. You, you just have to be yourself. And I think the audience can feel it, right? And this last thing I say, I know we got to move on. The last thing I'll say too is, you know, our strategic advantage is that we have millions of kids on this app messaging every single day. So there's this need to check a creator's story every single day where maybe I check their other socials once a week. I don't need to check it every day. I can catch up. I need to see what's going on today or I'll miss the opportunity to see what happened in that creator's life. So. I think something too brand marketers could kind of realize is it's interesting, right? Because the way Snap originally started was private, no one gets to see. So the relationship people have with Snap is I can be me. Like, you know, I mean, you see, like, you can really be authentically yourself. So it was so interesting when I saw the opening up and I was kind of seeing creators becoming having public profiles. And I think you're right. The conversion aspect is like tremendous. Of the couple of tests we did over the years, we did see a lot of high engagement and then even conversions, but it wasn't something that industry was talking about like compared to now i feel like it's the last six months eight months it's now really trying to shake anything like that so it's almost time to wrap up but i have one ask for you is we think about our next guest and we care deeply about talent managers and bringing you know awareness and knowledge into the space i am is there one person you think that we should invite <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna freak out that I'm naming him, but I am. I'm gonna I'm gonna name Amron Lopez. Uh, he's at Whaler Talent Management, which we're partnering with them. Um, but she's great. Um, he and I were assistants together back at CAA and have been in the early digital space. So you know we have some blood, sweat, and tears between us. And he's senior now over at Whaler. You know, managing a lot of junior managers and has a lot of clients. So he is someone who, like myself, has seen so much in this business and can probably speak to a lot. So. He's, he's my nomination. Definitely. I love it. And, and the third thing is, where can the audience find you either on your social uh, media, but also at Snap? What is the best way to reach out to you? 
I'm agnostic. I'm on all social medias. I obviously am on Snap, OMG, Brookberry, Instagram, Brookberry, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, and then, yeah, what I'll do is I'll give you guys, the, I don't know if it makes sense to give you guys the email, the alias that people should reach out to if they want to nominate Snapstars. Yes. Like, yes. Yeah. Okay. So anyone tuning in can get that their hands on that email and definitely send over your rosters. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you for being like such an inspiration. Uh, I hope I'll be able to meet you soon in LA. Tinashe, you're always amazing. Thank you so much. We talk soon. Thank you, Brooke. Hey, everyone. Quick intermission. So Brooke sent me the email after the podcast. So if you want to submit your talent to Snapchat for review, it's at snapstarrequestgeneral at snap.com. Once again, snapstarrequestgeneral at snap.com. All one word. 